Gitin Daf Psamach Amid Aleph and Beis Learning and Knowing Eit La Sot La Hashem Heferu Torah Techa. So in the Western world, we see learning as a means of acquiring knowledge. And the ultimate is to have the knowledge, to know, which of course makes, makes things a little bit challenging now that machines have more knowledge than we have. What's the purpose of learning? We're not going to catch up with machines. We're not going to get more knowledge than machines. But in the Torah, it's very different. In the Torah, learning is an end in itself. Learning is not a means to acquiring knowledge. And in fact, learning is prioritized over knowledge. What's the difference between learning and knowledge? So learning happens by engaging in conversation. You learn by speaking. You don't learn by observing written, written information. And that's why in a yeshiva, there's a noise when everybody's learning. People are talking, there's conversation. When you go into university, you go into a library, it's silent because people are acquiring knowledge. You can acquire knowledge in silence, but you've got to learn in conversation. Learning is qualitative and it's experiential. Something's happening while you're learning, you're experiencing. It's a process in life. It's a journey without an end. Learning is not, a, is not about having. Learning is about a state of being. You're doing something. It's an activity. Knowing is quantitative. How much do you know? What do you know? And we, and we test knowledge quantitatively. You're given a score based on your quantitative knowledge, but you can't be given a score based on your learning. And knowledge is defined. Knowledge is about having, not about being. They're very different fields, knowledge and, and learning. And we'll go into it in much more deeply now in this, in this morning. So this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards, actually. We're going to start with the Gemara on Daf Beis Amud Beis. Then we're going to go back to the Gemara on Daf Beis Amud Aleph, and then we're going to go to the top of Beis, Beis Amud Aleph. And it starts with a posuk of Vayomer Hashem Moshe Ktov Lechad HaDvarim Ha'ele. Hashem says to Moshe on the mountain, write all this down on the Luchot. Write this down. Because I've made a covenant based on this with you and with Yisrael. And that alpi implies oral. It implies through conversation by mouth. So the Gemara picks up on this paradox in the Posuk. There's something about written. There's something about oral. Write these things, says Rashi. Only the written Torah which I'm dictating to you shall you write down. But all the oral conversation that you and I are going to have, which is the Torah Shebaal Peh, the oral law, that may not be written down. Why? Why may the oral law not be written down? It's against everything that we're accustomed to in the Western world. Says the Gemara, Dorosh Rabbi Yehuda Bar Nachmeni Meturgemane de Rabbi Shimon ben Lokish. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Nachmeni was the Meturgeman of, of Rabbi Shimon ben Lokish. He used to live in Tveria, and Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Bar Nachmeni was the Meturgeman. The Meturgeman means that in those days the Rebbe would give the Shir, but nobody could understand it. And he had a Meturgeman who would then explain it to people. And Rabbi Yudu Bar Nachmeni was the Maturgaman, but he was also a Darshan in his own right. He used to give droshes in Tveria himself in the time of Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish. And this idea of the Maturgaman, so why doesn't the, the Rebbe, why doesn't Reish Lakish say it clearly? Why do you need a Maturgaman? Because there are two parts to it. The one part is to communicate the essence of the Torah, and the other is, is to dumb it down a little bit, to make it understandable to people. And they're kept separate, otherwise the essence starts getting diluted. So in order to keep the essence pure, the, the Rebbe gave the essence, and then there was another guy who used to explain it in a way that people could, could, could get it with the, the art scroll version. But, but the Gemara remains un, unchanged. You might say, why would we still have the text of the Gemara? Just use translation, use the art scroll version, not, not even have the, the text of the Gemara. No, the Gemara must remain pure. The, uh, the original must remain undiluted. And, and more than that, people had to hear from Reish Lokish, even though they're understanding it through Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi, Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Bar Nachmeni, they need to hear, even though they don't understand Reish Lokish. They need to hear Reish Lokish and begin to understand why. Because when you're listening to somebody teaching Torah, you're not just listening to that person, he's plugged into his Rabbeim. And his Rabbeim to his Rabbeim, and his Rabbeim to his Rabbeim, all the way to, to, to Sinai. When a Rebbe is teaching Torah, you're sitting at Sinai and you're hearing Torah from the Rebbeinu Shalom through the mouthpiece of all the generations that, through which it has come. And you don't want to lose that by, by Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Bar Nachmeni just giving the diluted version to make it palatable. What did he teach Rabbi Yehuda Bar Nachmeni? This posuk we've just learned, how does it word? Dvarim shebichtav yatara shay omro alpe. You're not allowed to teach the written word without using a sefer, without using a chumash. 
You can't teach Chumash and Tanakh without having the words in front of you. Because you're drawing your energy from the words themselves. You've got to see the words, feel the words, understand the words, teach the words. Rashi says this is talking about teaching. You can write it down for your own notes. You can have a safer in your, in, in your office, in your, in your study, in your Beis HaMedrash. But when you're teaching, have a safer in front of you. And the oral law, the Gemara, and all the discussion around it, that you can't teach from a text. That you've got to talk through. That's got to be conversational. So the whole method of transmission of Torah is discussed by Rabbi Yehuda Bar Nachmeni in this very important piece of Gemara that we have in Daf Samach. Debe Rabbi Shmuel Tana, the house of Rabbi Shmuel learned, Eile atakotev, yatakotev halachot, as Rashi learned on the Posuk. These can be written down. What I'm dictating, Torah Shebichtav, the written law can be written down, but not the oral law. Om Rabbi Yochanan, lo karat akadosh boruchu briti misrael nebishvid dvorin shawapeh. Hashem's covenant with us is over the oral law. Let nobody say the written Torah is what's important. The oral law is the rabbis. No, says, the, uh, says Rabbi Yochanan. The oral law is what it's all about. The written law is just the platform that, that provides the, the vehicle to communicate the oral law and the source and the anchoring of the oral law. But God's relationship with the Jewish people is in the oral law, in the Torah Shabal Peh, in the, in the Mishnah, in the Gemara, in the Rishonim, in the Achronim, in the, and, and the Poskim. That's where Hashem's covenant with us is. That's where we engage in intimate relationship with Hashem. Ask the Gemara, now we go back to the Amad Aleph, Rabbi Yochanan, Vresh Lokish, Ma'ini, Bistifra, Da'agadat, Abishabse, Vailo, Nitan, Likosev. Rabbi Shiyochanan, Rabbi Shimon, Ben Lokish, used to give Medrash Shirim every Shabbos morning. Do you think that our Medrash Shir is the first Medrash Shir? No, no, they, that was what you used to do on Shabbos morning, you used to learn Medrash. And that's what we do every morning at 8 o'clock. At, we have a, a very important Medrash here. And that starts already at the time of Rabbi Yochanan Resh Lokish. They used to learn Gemara during the week. And Shabbos, they used to teach, teach Medrash. But they used to use a Sefer. And no, you're not supposed to write down oral law. The Gemara quotes a posuk from Tehillim. When it's necessary to do something to save Hashem, to do something to protect, to protect for Hashem, even if that means temporarily suspending a law of the Torah. That's how Rashi explains the Posuk in Tehillim. And so, yes, you're not supposed to write down the, the oral law, but for reasons that otherwise it was going to be forgotten, they were prepared to put aside that law, that din that you can't write down the oral law, they'd put aside temporarily to enable the printing of, of the oral law so that it wouldn't be forgotten, as we're going to learn in the in the Posuk. The Rashi on the, on the Posuk is important because apart from the first part which Rashi says, you see that there are times when we set aside a law to facilitate the preservation of the, of the law. A person who lives in Ranana, who has time that he takes off v'tayalan, and he does what I'm going to do next week in Mirza Hashem and takes some time off and they make their Torah, they have time for Torah, but there's time when they're not learning. Mefer Brit is undoing the covenant with Hashem. She'adam tzarich liot yagea b'torah kol sha'ot hayom. Because a person should be involved, engaged in Torah all the hours of the day. There's no such thing as time off. There's no such thing It's the summer. We're, we're taking it easy. We're not going to be at the shir in the summer. We'll start again after the summer. There's no time off. And I told you how in Velozhin there used to be a shir every single day of the year. And Rebbe Chaim Velozhin used to give the shir Mitzi Yom Kippur himself so that there wouldn't be a time that there isn't learning in the, in the yeshiva. There was no time off. Every day of the year there was learning. They continued daf after daf. They, they learned and they taught. There's no such thing as time off from Hashem. And even when we go on vacation, we take our Gemaras with us and we carry on learning and we carry on thinking in Torah. And even though, of course, we've got business and we've got professions and we've got things to do, but we need to understand that connection to Hashem, that we don't take a break from being connected to Hashem. And we don't, we, we don't have to make a new brach of Lasot with Divrei Torah when we come back from our work, because as we've learned, when we're at work, we're also thinking of Hashem. What are the halachot? What are we supposed to be doing? We're aware of Hashem. That, that that takes place. Some of us have got shirim in our offices, make us, makes us aware, integrates. We're to integrate everything we do during the day with Hashem. You can't separate, you can't disconnect. If you disconnect from Hashem, you're disconnected. It's like pulling the plug out. So it's, it's like your Wi-Fi not working, being off the internet. You can't pull the plug out on Hashem uh, at any time. 
That's how Rashi understands eight sort lashem feritoratecha. But there's an amazing mashor that I want to learn with you that learns it differently, and it's very important for us to understand. Says the mashor at the top of the second page of the source sheets. Why was the Torah not allowed to be written down the oral law? What was the reason for that? It seems such a strange reason. Of course, write it down, preserve it, keep it in the libraries have copies of it all over the place, distribute it. What is this you're not allowed to write down? What we're worried about is you're going to say, I've got this for him. If I need something, I'll look it up. And if I don't know where to look it up, I'll Google it. I've got access to it. Says, says the Ma'ashor, the Torah doesn't want you to have access to it. The only access you should have to the Torah is through engaging in the Torah through learning the Torah, through connecting with the Torah, not through knowing that you've got a safer on your shelf that you can always go and look up and you've got a disk on your computer that you can always access. Because, says the Masho, it's not possible to write down everything the mouth can communicate. And that means both qualitatively and quantitatively. If you're reading the written word, you're reading only a tiny portion of what should and could be talked out. And more than that, you're not connecting with the origin of the Torah. When somebody's teaching you or you're learning with a Chavrusa, you're connecting to the source. Somebody's teaching you Torah, you're learning the Torah that that person learned from their Rabbeim and him from his Rabbeim. And it's at the moment, as we're going to see right now in the Zohar, it, it, it's your busy you're connected. When you're sitting here and we're learning together every morning, it's different from listening online. And listening online is, of course, better than just reading it in a safer. And, and seeing it in a video is perhaps better than just hearing it. But the best is to be present because we're communicating energy. And where am I drawing the energy from that I'm communicating to you? From my Rabbeim, that energy. I'm connecting to my Rabbeim. And where does that come from? Their Rabbeim and their Rabbeim. So at this very moment that we're learning, at this time at 5 to 7 in the morning in Ranana, we are learning Torah from the Rebbein Hashem on Har Sinai. It's being passed all the way down. And that's why each one of us has to be careful that we are Kalim Haru'im. We are vehicles that are fit to communicate that Torah, to receive the Torah from our predecessors and from Sinai, and to communicate the Torah to those of us who are here today. That's what happens in conversation. That can't be written down. When you're written down, you're reading a book. It's sterile. It's not dynamic. You're not connected. You're only connected when you're learning with somebody from somebody. And, he, and even quantitatively, it's not possible to write down everything that has been said. And so in the early days when they had minds that were able to absorb, they said, don't write your Gemara down so that you have to learn it. Because learning is what's important, not knowing. If information was important, writing is the best way to preserve information, and it's always accessible. But it's not what's important. Learning is important, not the information. The information is the, is the result of learning. But the thing, what, what the Torah wants us to do is last sok Torah, to be engaged in the process of learning, and that is oral. That is verbal. That is conversational. That is through relationship between Talmud and Rebbe, and Rebbe and his Rebbe, and all the way back, and between Chavrusas learning from each other. That's what Torah is. And that brings him to live his Torah. If you're engaged in learning, and it's proper learning, you, and you're engaged, that will bring you to fulfill the Torah, to live the Torah. But nowadays, if that's not possible, they've allowed us to do that. And here's the important word in the Marsha. They've allowed us to write the Torah down. Afal pish al heferu techa. Even though by writing the Torah down, you are cancelling the Torah out. Because people will stop continuous learning. If you're afraid of forgetting it, you go over it in your mind and over it and over it and over it. You don't lose it. And I say like to you often with the Matmonim, during the day, just remind yourself, what did we learn today at the Matmonim? What was it? What was the principle? What were the sources? Just remind yourself so that you reconnect to it. If you've got it written down, you don't do that. You'll say, I'll look, I'll look at the source sheet later on. I'll see it. No, it must be in your mind, in you, not on a piece of paper, not in a book. So by allowing 
doing this, we destroyed the Torah. People often say when they ask me about things like art school and these various different aids, and I say that's the most wonderful thing that's happened because it's made Gomorrah and Torah accessible to people. It's the most terrible thing that's happened because it's destroyed the process of learning. It's both. Heferi Torah but there are times when you've got to do that. Says the, the Mashor, allowing the writing down of Torah actually destroyed the learning process, but what can you do? It's better than nothing. But we need to know that, and we need to know when we're engaged in learning and in, in, in engaged with Torah, what's actually happening. We need to know the difference between when we're gaining information by looking something up and by reading, and when we're sitting in a shir and we're learning from somebody. We need to know the qualitative difference of being plugged in and just being passively uh, allowing oneself to understand what's happening. Not that there's no time to know the halachot. Back at the top of Amud Aleph, the Gemara says, what is a parnas? A parnas is the gaba. And the Gemara says, after the Koyin, the Levi, the Israel, Tamid Chachomim, then comes the gaba. And who is, is a gaba, says the Rashi, is a Tamid Chachom Aruuyim Limnotam Paranas. There are certain Tamid Chachomim who are suitable to become Gaboyim. And who are they, says Rashi? Who, a person who knows the halachot. A gaba has to know the dinim. A Gabba doesn't have to be a Talmud Chochem, he has to know the dinim. So if you're a Gabba, if you're running the shul, you need to know the facts. But if you're a Talmud Chochem, you need to be learning. That's not about what you know, it's about what you're learning. And the last thing, just a moment or two, even if we have to, it's so important to hold up the davening just for a minute or two. The Zohar says, on lo ta'asellecha pesel v'chol tmuna. Don't make yourself a graven image. Don't commit idolatry. The Zohar says, what is that talking about? Rabbi Yitzchak says... How careful a Rebbe has to be to say nothing that doesn't connect with what he learned from his Rabbeim. Don't make things up. Other than the, using the method that your Rabbeim taught you how to be mechadesh, how to create new ideas. Don't make new things up. And how careful you have to be because anybody who teaches Torah that he didn't receive from his Rabbein, anybody who's teaching Torah but isn't connected to the source at the time that he's learning and teaching in Torah, when he comes to Olam Haba, they don't let him in. It's quite a scary, a scary piece of Zohar. And what's important to know is when we make the brocha, as with all brochas, we say, We don't say, Asher Hotzi. We don't thank Hashem for having created bread. Or bore priya adama, we say, don't say who created vegetables or fruit. We say who is creating. And the same with, with Torah. Asher natan lanu Torah temet. We say, Hashem, we thank you for gi having given us the Torah. Baruch atah Hashem. What do we say then? Notena Torah. Every minute you're giving me the Torah while we're sitting and learning here in Ranana and other people are learning with us around the world, what, as we're learning this, Hashem is, is, we're plugged in, Hashem is feeding us. Hashem is providing the energy, the understanding, the knowledge that we're sharing with each other. It comes from Hashem, it comes from Sinai, that's what being plugged in is. And that's what learning is. Learning is not having knowledge. Learning is not about having it at all. Learning is about being. Learning is experiential. Learning is about plugging into the Torah and plugging into a Rebbe and plugging into Sinai and plugging into Hashem Yisbarach himself. That's what learning is. And every moment we can do it. We don't all have the opportunity to do it all day. We have to be, value those people who do. There are people, Baruch Hashem, who sit all day and they're plugged in. And that helps the whole nation to be plugged in. But each of us has opportunities during the day when we can plug in. And we should never think that just reading the Torah or accessing the information is a substitute for the experience of learning from a Rebbe, of learning in, in conversation, of speaking something out, because the quality and quantity of the spoken word is just multiples beyond anything you can possibly access in the written form.